Everybody get the notice? Okay, so we are recording yes. the Connect to Thrive January 2023 meeting. All right, so with that, um, I'm just going to go who's in my Brady Bunch uh, screen here of uh, folks. And so Jeannie, you are up first if you want to start with your name and um, Civitan Club you're in and its location, not your location. <laughs> right. Although tonight they're one and the same. <laughs> no, they're not actually because Jeannie Jarrett, I'm with the Vienna Civitan Club, which is located in Vienna, West Virginia, but I live in Charleston, West Virginia. Oh, awesome. awesome. So I'm like 75 miles away. <laughs> Nothing's close to you, is it, Jeannie? No. <laughs> awesome. All right, Nate, you're up next. I put my information on the chat, but I'm Nathaniel Geyer of Capital Region Civitan in Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. Fantastic. Great to have you, Nate. All right, John. John Walters. Okay. Uh, North Columbus Civitan Club and also uh, Chair for Membership Development. Awesome. Thanks, John. All right. It says Crystal, but I see Billy. Yep. I'm on Crystal's computer. That's why. <laughs> I'm, like I'm on the Frederick Club, married to Crystal, ex governor. <laughs> and, but you guys are currently where? And that's Frederick, Maryland that you're talking about, but where are you right now? Uh, we're in Tarpley, Texas, outside Bandera, Texas, which is about an hour and a half outside San Antonio. Awesome. Yep. Living my dream of a life on the road. All right, Janice, you're up next. Oh, you're muted, Janice. Sorry about that. Hello, everybody. Glad to be here. My name is Janice Wilson, and I am the president of the Charles County Civitan Club, located in Waldorf, Maryland, and I live in Waldorf, and that's where I am right now. Awesome, awesome. Janice, did you guys get some snow today? No, we got rain all day, cold and rainy. Oh, well, you, you're lucky. We got three inches over here in Martinsburg, so oh, my dodge goodness. that bullet. <laughs> but <Bye. thanks> coming, <laughs> <Janice. laughs> Good to see you. All right, Linda Powell, you're up next. I'm Linda Powell, I'm with the Tyson, excuse me, the Fairfax Civitan Club, and that's in Fairfax, Virginia. Awesome, great to have you, Linda. Thank you. All right, Carol Walters. I'm Carol Walters in Ohio with the, West, with the North Columbus Civitan Club. And I'm the Planning and Procedures Chair, so I get to nag Denise, sorry about that. No, I appreciate <laughs> it, believe me. Uh, if I could just replicate you in all parts of my life, it would be a lot easier, <laughs> but I'm grateful to have you in this one. Hey, um, Mark Isinger, I just got a message from Judy Ballinger that she's unable to log on. So do you mind um, working on that? Oh, now I sure. see she's coming in right now. Okay, awesome. Oh, okay. Right. Um, okay, Dave Hartman. Hi, I'm Dave Hartman, Fairfax Civitans, and I'm from Fairfax, Virginia. Very cool. Thanks, Dave. And right next to you, and I don't know how far you are, but you are next to each other in the screen, but in real life, I hope it, you're probably right next to each other there too, but Donna Hartman. No, we're not. <laughs> I'm Donna Hartman, and I'm with Fairfax Civitan, and it's in Fairfax, Virginia. Awesome. Thanks. Good to see you, Donna. <laughs> All right, we've got Stephanie up next. Hi, I'm Stephanie Bigwood. I'm with the Baltimore Club. Great, great to see you. That's my nice first meeting. You. Yeah, it's good to see you. Nice to meet you. Thank you. You too. All right, we have Patricia. Oh, you're muted. Sorry about that. I'm Patty San Antonio, and I'm with Club 177 in Annapolis, Maryland. Awesome, Patty. Great to see you. Thanks for joining us. All right, Kendra's up next. Hi, everybody. Kendra Romley, Peninsula Civitan Club in Newport News, Virginia. Great. Thanks, Kendra. All right, Mark. Mark Isinger in the Martinsburg Civitan Club in Martinsburg, West Virginia. Yay. All right, Tony. I'm Tony Massoud in Dayton, Ohio, Civitan, and also the chair for the marketing and communications team. Yeah, and Tony, we, we already shared with everybody that you are not in this cold weather. You are out in uh, California somewhere living your best life. <laughs> Palm Springs. <laughs> Palm Springs. Palm Springs. All right, let's do the other Tony. Tony, warmly.
Oh, Tony Warmly, did you hear me? Sister, okay. you're muted. Yeah. Hey, I'm sorry about that. That's I apologize. <laughs> I am Tony Wormley, um, president of the Peninsula Civitan Club in Newport News, Virginia. Awesome. Thanks for joining us, Tony. Good to see you. Thank All you. All right. We've got Judy up next. Judy, I'm so glad you were able to get logged on. <laughs> yes. Thank you um, to Tony for his assistance. But I'm Judy Ballinger from the Martinsburg Civitan Club in Martinsburg, West Virginia. And this is also my first meeting. Awesome. Good to see you, Judy. Thanks for joining. All right. I think, okay, we've got Lynn, Lynn Leach. Hello. This is Lynn Leach with the Fairfax Civitan Club in Fairfax, Virginia, and I'm so excited. This is only my third time of trying to attend it. I made it tonight. Awesome. <laughs> well, we're glad to have you. Yay. <laughs> I'm getting out of the car now, so I'll see you in just a minute. <laughs> okay, cool. Thanks for coming, Lynn. All right, and then the last one I have on my list, unless somebody snuck in and joined and I didn't see their picture, is Al Harmon. Al. Hello, I'm Al Harmon, and I'm with the Civitan Club of Dayton in Dayton, Ohio. Awesome. We're in the same club. Oh, that's right. Yeah, yeah, but you're nowhere close to each other right now. No. <laughs> Only living a dream. Exactly, living our dream. All right. Well, thank you guys. I uh, appreciate you sharing kind of your locations. And we do, we've got a really good, um, we've got Ohio all the way down to the um, Southern Virginia, I guess, or the coast of Virginia. Kendra, what do you guys call yourself? The coast of Virginia? Mm -hmm. All the way up into Ohio. Mm -hmm. Yeah, coast. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So um, really good spread. And thank you all for coming. And with that, we will go ahead and turn it over to Kendra to share with <laughs> us our um our next big campaign and i think i need to stop sharing is that right yes stop sharing. okay here we go i'm stop sharing so kendra it's all yours all righty guys hello good evening and i am about to share my screen can everyone see the screen yes Hi. awesome sauce all righty, good evening, everybody. Um, like I just said before, my name is Kendra Wormley. I am a part of the Peninsula Civitan Club in Newport News, um, Virginia. I've been a Civitan for, I think this is my 14th year, 14 and some change. Um, so I am your membership engagement chair, and I would like to share some information with you guys and hoping to hype you guys up because we are going to be trying to embark on something new for this Civitan year. And that's something new is Civitan Day of Service. So you're probably asking me, what is Civitan Day of Service? With Civitan Day of Service, our goal is that we are going to be able to, it's going to be all about promotion of Civitan, about an awareness of Civitan, and also of us using our social media as well as we promote and give awareness about Civitan to people, not only in our community, in our area, but in our region, and then also to Civitan International, because we want to be the ones to kind of make this footprint and make well, the blueprint. Yeah, the blueprint. Make the blueprint and have um, to start something different and new and be able to unify us all as Civitans as we do our Civitan work. So when is Civitan Day of Service? And this is, I do apologize for the color of this logo because this is not friendly to those who may have some visual impairments and I do apologize for that. Um, but Civitan Day of Service is going to be on Saturday, March 25th. All righty. So we have from this day, two months to get ready. <laughs> So we got some time to prepare. We got some time to get this word out, to bring out that awareness and to think about some things um, that we can do in our community. And we want you to take this time and it's to time to kind of think outside the box if you can, but if you can't do that, that's okay too. So we just want you to utilize that day, September, I'm sorry, March, not September, March 25th of 2023. We want all of you all to talk to your clubs to come up with um, a service project that you can do on that day. And all of us in this region are gonna utilize that day to do service. All right, I see something in chat. Maybe 
Yep, so Nate is asking if we can have Civitan Day of Service on a different day. Does it only have to be on that day, Kendra? Well, you know, this is a day that we kind of want to bring awareness to Civitan. And actually, because we're going to be utilizing social media, that's going to be that draw. We want to see that engagement and see how we are trending. And mostly, you know, if it's on that same day, we're trending and we're using those hashtags, which we're going to talk about later, that's going to be the most biggest of it. That's going to be the biggest impact. Now, if this may be a, a day that may not work for you, like, unfortunately, I have to work that day. So I won't be able to be able to um, do a service project with my club, but I'm hoping maybe to connect with um, the Charlottesville Club or was that Thomas Jefferson Club, because I will be in the Charlottesville area, um, hoping to get them on board as well. And then maybe if I can't be in my club, I can be in another club and being able to do my civitan duty. And Kendra, um, so I, I know that we had kind of talked about if you don't have, uh, like, if you can't get something coordinated, but there's something on maybe that Friday that you could do or that Sunday that you could do, you can still benefit from a lot of the buzz that we're going to get going correct. that weekend. But that's just kind of a focus because we'll have a lot happening that day. Is that right? Correct. Yeah. Because our okay. goal is to trend on that particular day. But if you cannot do it on that day, that's okay that's fine because it's all about us doing service in our community and letting people know who we are. And Nate, I'm going to get to all that um, as I go through my presentation. So I probably will answer some of those questions that you may have. So um, you can continuously put them in chat, but I probably will answer them as we go along. Okay. So March 25th is our goal um, for Civitan Day of Service. So while we're doing Civitan Day of Service, um, I don't know if you guys are um, um, are familiar with our impact areas that we have within Civitan. And I'm not saying that you have to do it within an impact area, but most of the things that we do follows underneath the impact area that we have within Civitan. So we have four impact areas or subsets of the Civitan mission statement. Um, and the clubs and the members focus on the efforts of improving the lives of individuals with intellectual and developmental disabilities, advocating for change, spreading the good work of Civitan through the world. And when we talk about intellectual and developmental disabilities, we are talking about that umbrella where the disabilities fall underneath. So that's going to include those who may have autism, those who may have Down syndrome, may have a mental health um, diagnosis, may have a physical disability, um, emotional, all those things is underneath that umbrella of intellectual and developmental disabilities. So those four impact areas are health and wellness, education and employment, accessibility and inclusive communities, family and community support. So you're probably asking me, hmm, what does each one of those things stand for? Oh, here we go. Hi, diggity dog. Oh, my thing is actually working the way I wanted it to, but not really. So underneath the health and wellness, these are going to be creating avenues for those with IDD intellectual developmental disabilities to focus on physical health and mental health. I'm, I'm sorry, physical, emotional, and mental health. So that can include some examples of that is um, doing, working with adaptable sports teams, athletic teams, or sporting events, like a special Olympics team, doing one-on-one, being a one-on-one -on -one fitness buddy. Um, it can also include um, helping out with an accessible garden because when we put that nutrition in us, that's all about our physical health and also leads to a good mental health as well. Plan and execute a nutrition and or cooking class. Um, and it can also include um, inclusive or adaptive outdoor recreation activities, like doing a, a particular camp that day, a fishing camp, doing games outside, anything, et cetera, anything dealing with health and wellness. Next one we have is education and employment. And this is advocating for people with IDD to reach their fullest potential through classroom, job experience, and other continued learning. So we wanna provide some of those opportunities. Um, it can include hosting a book club um, or reading to a group of individuals with IDD. I know there is one club, I believe, Mar Mirrors a club, I think they do something similar to that and connecting at a Barnes and Noble and doing a, a reading group um, and helping with some literacy um, in their community. Um, create, fund, or maintain a volunteer program about adult literacy program. Um, look for doing a scholarship for students with IDD. 
some of our students are will be graduating from high school and they may be wanting to continue their education. So Great. you can embark and place put in place Great. a scholarship program for um, a student that has IDD who wants to continue their education. And that could be either going to a two year, four year college, or if they're choosing to do a trade school or any type of post-secondary training. Um, doing a school drive um, or supporting our teachers in the classroom that um, work with our kids who have disabilities for those special education programs and classrooms. And that can be a huge help to a lot of our teachers because our teachers are burned out all the way across the board, whether they're general population, general ed population, or in special ed population. So it could be finding a way to connect with our teachers to provide some supplies that may enhance and help them as they are teaching our, I like to always say my kiddos, because that's how I talk at work, because I'm all about helping the kiddos. Um, job readiness supplies for an agency organization, and that's helping people to prepare for unemployment out in the community after um, if they may be in a um, in a situation where they are still in high school and they maybe are going to be graduating or they may have already graduated high school or left high school and they need some job readiness skills to help them to um, be able to be employed in the community um, or use service hearts the service heart program or any other avenues to recognize and celebrate employers in the community we do have some people in our community who are employing people with disabilities and they are doing a fantastic job and we you may want to recognize those employers as well. The next category is accessibility and inclusive communities. So this could be working with um, helping people in the classroom. Um, <laughs> creating sensory friendly environments in public spaces, um, contributing funding or equipment to create accessibility and adaptive playground parks. And as we always do with Civitans, maybe you wanna recognize or identify a spot that may need a wheelchair ramp. It may be someone's home. You never know. You can always reach out. Um, so that's how you can do underneath that accessibility and inclusive communities. And the last one that we have is family and community support. So that could be hosting a respite day or an event for a family member or caregivers who have IDD because a lot of our parents, they are the caretakers of um, some of these adults who have IDD and they sometimes need a break. Everyone needs a break every once in a while and self-care is the best care of all. So maybe you can host a spot for, hey, we'll do respite um, or work with the organization that can help out. They may have an early childhood um, program that they may have something a day and they may need some hands and some people to help on, to help out to love on these kiddos or it could be a group of adults as well. Host a dance party or a special event um, of working with a group home or maybe a day support program or a provider in your area. Identifying a community organization or agency to ask them what their needs are. You could kind of do like an angel tree, but it may not be Christmas. See some of the things they may need, or maybe they may need some assistance in painting something in their house or working on something um, to fix something in that group home. Uh, partner with a mental health professional and start or host a support group for family members and caregivers for those with IDD. Um, create and deliver care packages to individuals with IDD, or you can sponsor someone who has IDD and be able to brighten their day if they are in need of some supports. Uh, or maybe adopt a residential group home or a resident in a group home. So there's a lot of different opportunities that we can see. And the things that I went over are just a few opportunities or suggestions of what you can do for Civitan Day of Service on March 25th, because I'm not going to mess that date up again. So keep telling yourself, March 25th, Civitan Day of Service. So what we're going to do now, we want you to plan, then we want you to do, and then we want you to post. PDP, that's my acronym right now. PDP, we want you to plan. Sit down with your club, talk about this day, plan that day out. It's gonna be that fourth Saturday of March. What can we do? Plan it out, connect with an organization. For instance, our Palisa Civitan Club. We're in the process of trying to connect with the Arc of the Greater Williamsburg to see if they are gonna be doing something that day and how we can play a part in any type of community activity they may have or possibly be able to plan something. But it doesn't have to be the Arc. We do have that connection and, you know, we're, I know more information is going to be coming out soon, Denise, I'm quite sure, with Civitan International and how we're going to make that connection with the ARC nationally. 
So there are different arcs that are located throughout our region. And maybe you could connect with them and say, hey, they may have a group home. Say, hey, is there a group home? Maybe we can sponsor or maybe we can um, sponsor fun activity for that day. Maybe there could be, uh, I was going to say baseball, but it's not baseball season. Maybe there's a basketball, a college team. Um, no, yeah, no, 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 because that's going to be close to Final Four. So take that out. So maybe it could be some high school um, tournaments or some type of sporting activity. Could be soccer or something with the local college. Hey, can we sponsor your group, uh, a group home and take them out to experience this day? It can mean so many different things. <laughs> the second thing you're going to do is do it. You're going to go out there and do that Civitan Day of Service on March 25th. You're going to be a doer. And then after you do, and while you're doing, you're going to take pictures. You're going to capture these moments. And then what you're going to do, you're going to post it. And you're going to say, what am I going to post? You are going to post these pictures or any videos that you may have from that Civitan Day of Service, utilizing your Facebook and or Instagram pages. Depending on which one you have, you may have both. You may only have one. My club, we only have one. We only have Facebook. And when you're making that post, you're going to use these hashtags. Hashtag Civitan, hashtag Civitan Day of Service, hashtag Civitan Day of Service 2023. Because we want this not to be the only time that we do this. We want to make this a yearly thing. So we can start tagging it and you put those posts and you hashtag it and you tag it and we begin to trend. Ooh, buddy, 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 boy, the things that we can do and the, the, the way that we can reach people. And I know my time is very limited because, hey, it's a Wednesday. It is hump day. I don't know about y'all, but I have had a very long week and my day is my week is going to keep on going. So I don't want to hold you too long. So if you want me to talk to your club or to help spread the word, let me know. Reach out to me email me and then I can show up to one of your club meetings or if you know there's a lot of um, people who are wanting to do this maybe we can schedule a day and then we can have people come in um, and I can show this presentation we can sit down we can talk we can put our mind have a meeting of the minds and I can try to help you out um, in thinking of some opportunities or some things that you can do for Civitan Day of Service. Awesome. See, there's another chat. Yes, you can po post on LinkedIn, whatever social media that you may have. Um, just use those hashtags um, that we had before, and I'll put those back up on the screen really quick. Hashtag Civitan, hashtag Day of Service, hashtag Day of Service 2023. Are there any questions for me? And you guys can put them in the chat or just unmute yourself and ask Kendra. So Kendra, one thing that I would, because um, I know we have clubs of differing, um, you know, balance sheets and, you know, of, uh, resources available for this. So I want to share two things. Number one, um, you know, some of these don't cost any money, like going and, you know, helping to do yard cleanup at, you know, spring cleaning for a group home in your community. Mm -hmm. You know, all they want are just hands to come out and, you know, a couple of garbage bags and some rakes and shovels and, all of a sudden you've got a beautiful yard and a couple of hours of service that you've given back to the community. But if you do have, um, you know, some, some funds set aside for service projects, certainly I know a lot of these organizations, um, you know, could utilize um, some funds and people, but I would definitely recommend, you know, try to focus this more on the people aspect rather than just the money aspect. So, um, you know, try to find a way that you can get your members engaged and we are going to talk to John Walters and um, some folks next month about how to use a project like this to help to recruit members um, into your club, because, you know, especially with the younger folks, but as someone who used to be a younger folk and now is not, I can just say that I am much more interested in um, things that involve me coming in and using my times and talents rather than, you know, showing up to meetings. And I know a lot of younger folks are saying the same thing that they're interested in projects that um, utilize their, their time and talents. And so really this is a good opportunity to reach out to those folks using the Civitan Days of Service. And then the last thing I wanna share is something exciting I heard at the Civitan International Board meeting this weekend. Kendra talked about those impact, those four impact areas. And some of you may remember that last year there was actually an impact area grant 
competition um, through Civitan International that is going to continue this year. So be looking for information about that grant program um, and that grant competition. And I don't know the timing if it, we're going to be able to have funding or decisions made prior to um, the event so that you could use the money for the event. But certainly, if you you know um, you know you've got some funds that you could uh, kind of front the money, and then when the Civitan money grant um, were able, you know, if you won and it was able to come in, then that would just replenish the funds that you use. So keep an eye out for that. That's a, an exciting opportunity. But um, any other questions before we turn it over to Jeannie to talk about juniors? John Walters. Uh, one thing that I'll probably get an amen from Tony is that when you're posting it, post live action pictures, not people shaking hands or posing in a crowd. Uh, let, let's, let's show people doing things, not just posing. Absolutely. Yeah, good point. Good point. And we are going to hear from Tony. Um, also, uh, I think, Tony, you're up in March in our Connect to Thrive to share some last minute tips for you guys on how to post, what to post, and, um, you know, maybe even how to get some, if it's a big enough project, how to get maybe your local news outlets out and using our PR tools to be able to really publicize the um, the project itself. So, awesome. yeah, I, I, I like to add to what uh, sure. John said. Uh, when you're doing a, uh, a, a program on March 25th, an event, maybe you could go Facebook Live and that would record it. Then you could take the recording and post it on your website, the Facebook page. I, I mean, it's really cool when you record something live, even, even if it's for a couple of uh, minutes. Yeah, and I would suggest only for a couple of moments when it comes to Facebook Live, because if you're doing an event for three hours, I don't want to see you for three <laughs> hours doing an event. No, and no, a couple just of minutes to air. show what you're doing. Yeah. But yes, most definitely show what you're doing um, and make sure you take multiple pictures. And the biggest thing of all is that we want to use those um, hashtags because that is what's going to get us to trend. And if we are beginning to trend, you're going to see those numbers and how that social media works. You're going to see those. Um, you're going to see it trending. So and that starts placing on people's um, feeds. So just make sure you always hashtag. Awesome. Thank you, Kendra. I appreciate that. Um, we're really excited about bringing this opportunity to you guys. Um, you know, and as we said, in the next two Connect to Thrives, we're going to give you even more tools and tips to be able to make the Civitan Days of Service a success. And I will tell you that this is unique to um, the Region 4 District. As of today, I have not heard of any other region that is um, kind of putting this a campaign like this together to help grow our impact, grow our members, and really you know, show what Civitan is about to our community. So um, I'd love it if we could all get in involved and if you're friends with um, other clubs that are maybe not here today, this evening, uh, you know, reach out to them and ask them what they're going to be doing um, and if there's any way that maybe you can partner or talk through those projects and things like that um, to get more excitement going. So with that, I will turn it over to Jeannie to talk about our awesome Junior Civitans. Jeannie. Jeannie, if you are talking, I don't hear you. It would help if I unmuted myself. Awesome. Okay. <laughs> oh, my goodness. And I'm trying to get rid of the bar so that I can get to the slideshow. That's what I'm trying to do. How do you get the bar away? I forgot. <laughs> um, our IT person, Kendra. Well, what was the question again? I'm sorry, Jeannie. I've got the bar on the bottom with the mute and all that, so it's not letting me start my slideshow. The PowerPoint. Oh, you you may need to go up to the top and hit slideshow from beginning because oh, you have that bar sometimes. Yeah, that's, yeah, yeah, we, okay, yeah we can see your slideshow. Yeah, there you go. All right, I sorry, I apologize. All right, for those of you that don't know me, I'm Jeannie Jarrett. I've been involved with Junior Civitans when I'm 
built my first club in 1997 and then became the junior chair for what was the West Virginia district and then became the Cardinal district and started that in 1998 and built my second club in 1999. So junior civitan runs through my veins, ran through my kids and <laughs> still runs through my veins. People say, why do you still do it? Your kids are in your thirties, you know? And it's like, because I like junior civitans, <laughs> okay? <laughs> But we have now merged, as you guys did, the same thing. We're now the Region 4 District Junior Civitans. And it's funny. Um, Denise, you started off with an inspiration. And this is something that all Junior Civitan meetings, we do the same exact thing, okay? Um, and it's the Junior Civitans that come up with these. And I love this one. We make a living by what we get, but we make a life by what we give. And that's, you know, came from the mouth of one of the junior civitans and it was by Churchill. Um, currently we have eight clubs. Um, we've got the ones up in Maryland, Pennsylvania, Virginia, and then West Virginia. So we're in one, two, three, four different states. We love to expand if we can go further, but you know, hey, we're all for it. Here is your currently your leadership council, the executive committee. You've all seen or may have been to any of the meetings where you saw uh, Kinley, who is our regional director. She is from the George Washington Club, one of the clubs that I built. Um, so she's very local. And she's been a, civitan, a junior civitan for seven years. She started with me at the John Adams Club when she was in sixth grade, and she's now a senior at George Washington is still strong in junior civitans. And so you have all, this is the women's team this year. We didn't have any guys that applied for the positions. So <laughs> gotta watch out for these strong, and these are some strong women here. Okay, I love them all. Uh, just a couple of little reminders, all in summits coming up. And oh my goodness, Ms. Worley, I'll be in Birmingham probably working on March 25th. Okay, because I'll be at All in Summit with Kinley. Um, it's down in Birmingham, Alabama, and it's a leadership weekend. Um, Kinley is set a goal of $6,000 to raise for the research center. She's already up to $39.55 right now. So she's getting there. She's getting there. And she's, she's gung ho on this. I mean, this is her second year of doing it. And I just wanted to kind of share some pictures. Because you never know, we, you hear about these things all in summit, it used to be Snowdo, but you don't get to see what actually happens. And you can see that, you know, they they get awards, they get together, like this was a speaker, this is one of the speakers that came, they had leadership um, training, they had, this is a woman, she was on um, Netflix, and she was training them in leadership. Um, this is the whole group. Here's was down at the research center. They were actually trying out some of the tests and things like that. So, you know, it's not just a weekend of kids getting together and doing nothing. They spend the first day doing community service for like hours, okay? Then the second day is the leadership training and things of that nature. Then we go to the Civitan Research Center and then we go home. So they really get a very good weekend. And Kinley, if you ever talk to her about it, she just goes on and on about it, so. You know, if you haven't, you can always help us out. And one of the things we have is a regional service project and that came up from the uh, regional, the service um, officers. And this is to make cards and placemats for Meals on Wheels. Here's a great project that every Civitan club can do and make it a joint project with us all. Okay, look at these cards that these, this is from the high school group. I mean, you think high schoolers be like, oh, I don't want to make cards. Look at these cards. They're gorgeous. Okay. The placemats. And each club is encouraged to make these for the, you know, throughout the year. Um, they already did it for Christmas. Now they're working on Valentine's. Then they're going to do something for March. But they're given to the Meals on Wheels, their local Meals on Wheels. <laughs> and they're delivered with the meals to the people that are getting them. What a great way to touch the heart of lonely people that are stuck in their houses that may not be able to go out, you know, and I mean, would you just love getting a card like that? <laughs> okay. 
And of course, got to remind you about this. Save that game. February 5th. It's our virtual bingo fundraiser. Okay, this is to help support the programs that um, the district junior cemeteries are doing. We no longer have district dues. So this is our only fundraiser for the year. Okay. And it's it's not bad. Registration is $15, but you're going to get five bingo cards for $15. We're going to play five games. So if you take five bingo cards times five games. Oh, it's two bingo cards. For $15, you have a chance. You have, what, 25 chances of winning one of the $25 online gift cards. That's not bad for $15. And it's all going to go to help our junior civic hey, teams. So, yeah. Can, can you put that link? Is that possible to put the link in the chat so people can register tonight that want to participate? Sure. I'll do that when I'm done. I'll, yeah. I'll, when it, whenever you're done. Yeah. Before you, before you run. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm, I, I just you. registered. I just registered the other day. Let me tell you, hit that. It's like, boom, boom, boom. You're done. I'm about to put it in the um, chat, Jeannie. Okay. I'm, I'm oh, in the process of finding it. In? Uh, okay. Right. Right. You're good. Yeah. Because it's actually through international. Okay, juniorcivitan.org, if you see the, the, the link. So it's it's a real nice, and you get a confirmation that you're registered, and then the cards will be sent right before the uh, the games. So that's February 5th. Hey, anybody you know, neighbors, people in your church, anybody that likes to play bingo, you know, we're going to have some fun doing it, okay? So don't forget about that one. But... What I really want to concentrate today on is really Civitan Club sponsoring Junior Civitan. Okay. Now, you say, why would I want to sponsor a Junior Civitan Club? Well, Junior Civitan is a program of Civitan International. This is something people think we're like a separate organization from Civitan. Junior Civitan is actually a program of international. So it's almost like a long-term project when you sponsor a Junior Civitan Club. So you have, you know, you're helping to mentor and build leadership in these kids. I mean, when you see these young ones like Kinley, who was very, very shy in sixth grade, and now she's a regional director. Okay, when you see that, you watch that happening, it's, it's an awesome experience. But here we're sharing our knowledge of leadership as a Civitan, you've all done it with these young people and you're giving them you know, a path to follow. You're also keeping them off the wrong path potentially. So remember, it's a program. So we really, it's a project. So, hey, you're always trying to think of a project. Well, here's one, Junior Civitans. And I'm going to ask you this question. How many times do you struggle to get enough people to help on the hands-on projects for your service projects? Like your March 25th project, right? <laughs> How many times? I know when I was in the Charleston Club, all right, it was hard to get people to do the actual work because some of them were older and they couldn't do it. And, you know, I mean, they all mean well, but it's hard to do it. So do you all struggle sometimes going, I wish I had more hands? Well, guess what? Junior Civitans are the best workers. They've got lots of hands. They got a lot of energy, okay? And they share that energy with you. That's, you know, it's a two-way street. We're mentoring them, we're guiding them, but what they give us is the energy and the boost that we need. That's why I love Junior Civitans because I never grew up, <laughs> you know? So definitely you got lots of hands. And also another question, does your club want to gain new members? Every club wants to gain new members. Well, guess what? These junior civitans, if they're helping you on a service project, their parents might come with them. Or they're, you know, hey, you've got to tap into that, all those parents that are members, even if it's not even on a service project, but you have the connection. If you have the connection, you have a potential group of people to try to get interested in 
serving on the adult level. So you can get, it's a win-win. You could get new members as a result of it. And my other question is, do you as a Civitan follow our Civitan creed? And the reason why I say that is because it really does say a lot about junior Civitans, if you think about it. Um, for example, long, let's see. Hold on a second. I'm just, I had this written down someplace here because I knew I would forget it, and I did. <laughs> oh, here it is. It's, for example, you reach out your hands in service to others, okay? And for a call to peace, guidance, and unity. Well, guidance, that's junior civitans. We've got to give them guidance. My eyes, you know, want to read, you know, we do all this stuff to the service of civitans, service. We're giving them guidance, service, and fellowship. And what's our motto? Builders of good citizenship. Gosh knows young people today need some guidance on becoming good citizens. There's a lot of that not happening in this world. So this is how you can really make a difference in your local community is to give these kids guidance and, you know, something to go on. So, you know, and I'm staying, you know, one thing is to sponsor a club, but once you sponsor, you stay with them. So staying connected is the success for both Civitans and junior Civitans, okay? If it's a school club, for example, there's two types of clubs. School club has to have an advisor. At least one of the advisors has to be a school staff member. So it could be a librarian, like George Washington has a librarian, okay? You know, John Adams, you can have, we have co-advisors. I'm an advisor, I've been an advisor since 97 and I have a teacher advisor. So I'm allowed to go in because I'm an advisor, okay? You can have a community club where you don't, are not associated with a school, but you would just have it set up maybe in a local community center or a local church or wherever you can find room. Even libraries have conference rooms and, and start a club. The only requirement there is that the advisor be a civitan. Oh, gee, there's a way to get another civitan in your club, okay? Somebody that wants to run kids. So, but if you have a school club, you really, the club, real, your club needs to select the liaison, all right? And so what is the liaison's role? You stay in contact with the club advisor. Club advisor, you know, especially teachers, somebody said it earlier, I think Ms. Well, yes, you did. Kendra said it. Teachers are exhausted. They're overworked. They've got a lot on their plate. So if maybe you could help them with filling out the forms, you know, for Civitan or, or just collecting the stuff and bringing it. Say you have a collection selection, go in, take the stuff. Don't expect the teacher to have to go run it to the local homeless shelter or whatever. You know, there's all different ways staying in contact with the club advisor. Plus they feel that somebody cares about them. So that helps the club. When possible, and it's not always possible because some schools won't allow outsiders in, okay? But attend the junior seventeen meeting. Not You don't have to go to every meeting, a liaison, but you know, maybe once a month go there or once a quarter just to see what's going on. What projects are they working on? And if you can't go to their meetings in the school, you can maybe at least do work with them on a hands-on project that's outside the school. So there's there's no excuse why you can't be working with the junior civitans, okay? You wanna, re and just like you're reaching out to the juniors, you have to bring the juniors to your club. You have to represent the junior civitans in your civitan club, keeping them up to date, what's going on with the club. Maybe they need some help, maybe they're struggling, maybe, you know, somebody might need ideas, whatever. And lastly, develop joint projects that the two clubs can work on together. For example, those cards and placemats that they're making. I think Fairfax, Lynn, I guess you guys, aren't you gonna be doing something with Madison? Yeah, that's gonna be one of our projects. We were trying to do a couple projects on uh, Civitan Day of Service. So that's okay. gonna be one of them we're trying to do. And that's exactly what I wanted to say to promote Kendra's day is here's a great way to get those hands 
to do the hands-on project on day of service for cemeteries. All right, what a great, and talk about awareness. You're working with the kids, especially if we have any type of, say maybe like somebody brought up news, you know, local channels or something. See, Cemetery's working with teenagers. This is great. This is great. There's so many things. And they have a lot of great ideas for projects. And they are also great at projects that don't cost anything because they don't have money. The clubs don't have money. So they're very good at finding hands-on projects that make like these cards. What is it? You go to the Dollar Tree and buy the stuff. You know, it's only a few dollars. So anyway, that's... Really what I wanted to talk about, I know there's so much I could go on and on, but we're, we're limited. So does any questions? Does anybody have any questions for Jeannie? Again, you can just unmute yourself or if you wanna put it in the chat. I think there was um, Jeannie, a couple of questions that got answered by our other um, attendees about the age groups. So junior right. seventh can be middle school and high school. Um, so that was a, a good answer. Any other questions? I was I was looking down for a bit while I listened, and maybe you put it up there. Could you give us your contact information, Jeannie? Oh, sure. Please. Well, I'll put it in the chat, okay? Thank you. So that way everybody will have it because I will gladly. Now, Carmen Gorby is the chairperson for our region for Junior Civitans, and I'm kind of like we weren't allowed to have co-chairs, so I don't, I'm not supposed to be called a co-chair, okay? Okay. We call ourselves Thumber and Louise, okay? <laughs> we just ride in the car together and go over the cliffs together with the kids, okay? You know, but we were both chair people in the past and we're helping each other out. So, but I have like the time. Carmen's busy. I'm retired now, okay? I mean, <laughs> I mean, people, the kids don't believe that I'm 65 years old, okay? They're all like, no, you have so much energy, you can't be. But it's them. They're the ones that are doing it to me. And so how do you will, club build a club? I put it in the chat. What's the process? Well, the process is, is you would have to decide if you want to approach a school. And then you would talk to the principal about, you know, wanting to start a Junior Civitan Club. There's a whole, you can go actually go on juniorcivitan.org. There's a whole package that you can go on for chartering clubs. Okay, what the process should be because you have to get a, the first you would have to do is get the permission from the school and then they would have to find an advisor and then you can start working to bring the kids in. A big drawer for kids, especially high schools, is the community service hours they get. Oh my gosh, they live, eat and breathe community service hours. So they like junior civitans because it gives them the projects. They don't have to think of what they're gonna do by themselves. So, but you would start it once you get 15 kids that are paid, then we can charter the, the club. A community club would be, you guys decide how you want to do it. It could be all different. One thing with that is you have, you're not limited to one school. So you could have like, maybe there's three schools in the area. There might be some private schools. There might be some homeschool people. They can all be in the same club. Mm -hmm. Okay. Usually a school club is limited to just who's in that school. Yeah. So there's a lot of to do. Just go to juniorcivitan.org. I'll put that in there too. Okay. I hope that yeah, answers and, your question. And Jeannie, the first step, I mean, you can certainly go to that um, civitan.org site to see the process, but the first stop is to let you or Carmen know <clears throat> yeah, well, yeah. if they're interested. I think it, it also says that in there. I think it's supposed <laughs> to be. I think that is one of the first things you got to let them, you know, let the chairperson yeah. know. And, and these because guys the been, Harrisburg region has been interested, but to but getting the participation of the school has always been a barrier. Now, because we have a lot of different. Yes, and that is a that's a frustration, and that's when they develop the community club because a lot of schools don't want any more clubs, and teachers don't want to become advisors. All right, so especially if you have that in that case, you know, if you can get say well say to them, if I be a co-advisor, you know, if we provide a co-advisor for you, you know, just basically they're the in-school sponsor and then you're the advisor. So you could, there's a couple of different ways, but the community club is a way to get around the, the frustration of schools that don't want it. Yep, absolutely. So 
Definitely lots of different options. Jeannie, thank you so much for the presentation. If you could put your contact information and Carmen's if you have it in the chat so people can yep. um, follow up with you guys. But I definitely, having been in clubs that have had junior civitans and kind of watching the ebb and flow, I, I can tell you it's so much more inspiring when you've got junior civitans um, you know, doing projects with you and just kind of reporting back of all the great things that they're doing as well and seeing them be successful, especially in the leadership opportunities that they have, um, you know, at the international level. So um, definitely love that, Jeannie. Great. Thank you so much. Um, any question, any other questions for Jeannie before we just move on really quick to the last couple of things that we're going to cover tonight? How long do you think the bingo event will last? I mean, two hours or any idea? I'm sorry, what will last? The bingo event, how long do you suppose oh, that will Oh, yeah, last? they think between an hour. It's going to be five games. Okay. So, you know, I mean, and if you have to drop off earlier, you know, that you just don't get the chance to win the last games. But when, the first, you know, it's, it'll probably be a little bit over an hour at the most. Yeah. And Jeannie, I did just register while you were giving your presentation to see how long it would take. It did only take a couple of minutes, but... Um, it's not five cards that you get, you get two cards um, with your $15 registration, but then you can get additional cards as well. Oh, you, okay, they must have changed it. Okay, because originally it was supposed to be five, okay. Yeah, but honestly, I can't manage more than one um, successfully, so <laughs> two's gonna feel pretty overwhelming anyway. So I'm, right. I'm kind of happy for that. Um, awesome, well, so let me, um, cause Denise, I know Denise, you guys, okay. let me, let me ask you a question. That's, that's two cards for five games. Is that what you mean? Yes. Yeah. Oh, okay. So that's okay. That's good. Yeah. Um, and so I know some of you guys got to drop off at seven for other commitments. So I'm going to go ahead and run through the um, save the dates that we have. If you guys could let me know when you can see that. Everybody good? All right. And somehow I've managed to cover that up with you guys. So give me one second. Okay. I think I got everybody back. Um, and so we've got January 31st, just a reminder that the Shropshire and our Region 4 District Scholarship deadline is fast approaching, so less than a week before that ends. Um, February 5th is the bingo, and hopefully you guys all um, can sign up tonight. It's going to be a ton of fun. And then February 15th, two weeks after the first deadline for scholarships, the FCIDD scholarship deadline. Um, will be happening. So make sure if you've got folks interested in either one of those that you get them um, that information that the deadlines are fast approaching. And Denise, and then, that's due to the club. Due to the, due call, to the club you. on the yep. 15th of February. Thank you, Kendra. Great clarification there. Yes, due to the club that is going to be submitting them to FCIDD. And then uh, a week after that, on February 22nd, a month from now, at six o'clock, we'll have our next Connect to Thrive, and we'll hear from um, member development and philanthropy on how to invite members to join your projects, and then all of the upcoming philanthropy opportunities that we have with the CIRC Breakthrough Golf Tournament and International Convention, um, Civit Hands at the Helm, all of that, just to give you a quick update on the opportunities to support um, CIRC and our international projects. And then uh, because um, it's not a leap year, one month later to the date, we will have our next Connect to Thrive on March 22nd. And that one will be updates from our marketing and communications and our planning and procedures to talk about how to share your Civitan days of service along with any other service that you do in your community this spring. And then um, Carol's gonna talk to us about upcoming elections, um, both at the club level and also at Civitan International level. And then, uh, and I apologize, Jeannie, I got the, I forgot to add the extra day, um, but our junior Civitan All-In Summit, March 24th through 26th. And I put Kendra the 24th through the 26th for the Civitan Days of Service, but remember it is the 25th is the target date because that's when everybody's gonna be kind of doing all their posting and hopefully getting a lot of um, trending, as uh, Kendra calls it, so that we get more awareness bang for our buck. And then lastly, um, the Leadership Council decided last week that we are going to have a virtual spring meeting like we did for our fall spring meeting in November, and that is going to be on Saturday, April 22nd. Um, same 9 a.m. to noon, and we'll have awards to share. We'll have updates to give. And we'll also have some training um, 
I believe it'll be from Civitan International, but if not, we'll get you some really good training um, locally here in um, from our region four district. So anything else um, that anybody wants to share? Let's see, Joanne O'Toole, I did not yes. see it in the beginning. So you have just jumped on. Is there anything that you would like to share from Civitan International that I may have missed? I have, I want to add something. Oh yeah. Newsletter, last uh, day to get your information in to Linda is February 20th. Awesome, thank you. I totally forgot to put that on. I appreciate that. So any club information and um, newsletter articles that you would like to share, February 20th. All right, and with that, um, Certainly, if you guys want to hang out, we would love to talk about what, oh, no, no, sorry. There's um, <laughs> There we go. <laughs> going too fast. Um, kind of, if you want to talk about kind of what's going well with your club so far this year, what are you looking forward to? If you could get some extra help, I know we talked about, you know, building a junior Civitan club, so we got you some extra support there and direction on that. But if there's other things that you want to talk about, um, candy box. I mean, there's lots of things that are happening. And if you just want to um, hang out and talk about those, and then if there's any opportunities that you want some support with, whether you're, it's a recruitment event um, for members, or, you know, you want to build a new club, we've got a lot of experts here um, to talk about that and just to share ideas. So with that, um, I'll open up the floor. I have two things to add. Great. <clears throat> We have uh, the, uh, God, my mind went blank. <laughs> I'll bring it up. It's important, though. I forgot. <laughs> hey, Denise, February 3rd is the 80th anniversary of the sinking of the Dorchester, and that's the story of the four chaplains. That's Thanks. what I was going to bring up. <laughs> Thanks, Tony. I, I said everybody, I said all the clubs. The yes. uh, clergy week uh, kit. All the clubs should take advantage of that. And also I, I requested the uh, uh, public relations representative from each club to be sent to me so we can get the information to them on uh, handling media and training for them. Absolutely, and Tony, just, um... One of the pieces of feedback that we got, uh, Nate, I don't know if he's still on, but he shared with us at the beginning of the meeting, I think before you um, jumped on, that um, the Civitan clergy information came a little bit too close to the event for them to, you know, be able to plan the event. So I, you know, kind of clarified that that was for if you were already planning an event, here's some extra tools, if that was already on your calendar. But definitely encourage everybody, if you don't have a clergy event planned, or maybe you've got something a little bit lower key, take a look at those tools to see if you can implement them this year or, um, you know, have it on your plan to yep. do a clergy night event for next year. So great tools. Thank you, Tony. And then Janice, I saw you raised your hand, I think. Did you want to share? Yeah, I just wanted to share real quick. Um, in September, we had a very successful picnic for 160 guests at a local farm. It was it was wonderful. We had a DJ. We danced with the guests. We fed them. We had an ice cream truck. We played games. It was wonderful. Big success. And then I wanted to let everybody know that on February 14th, we're going to have a karaoke party. Same thing. We will feed them. We'll oh, it is a one. We've done it a couple of times before. And they sing, they love to have fun. Oh, it's probably going to be another 150 people. Awesome. Uh, but we're, we're planning that. And the third thing is we are going to participate in the Night to Shine event on February 10th. Nice. So I, yeah, so I have to mention this too. The Charles County Club is very small. We only have seven members. Let me tell you, at that picnic, mm -hmm. we had seven members present. 
all actively working. I'm just really excited because you know, in most organizations, you have a core group of about eight to 10 people who do everything, right? Right. <laughs> Whether it be church or anything. So I'm really, really excited and happy to be leading the Charles County group. They're a great group. They're always there, full <laughs> participants. So just wanted to share that. Yeah, Janice, thank, thank you. you so much. And it sounds like your projects are a great way to get members and the ones you do have engaged. And so I hope uh, you join us next month when John shares some of the tips on how to build that volunteer base, right? And uh, I can't imagine anything better than uh, you know an event that has 150 people where you can volunteer your time and see that impact almost immediately um, oh, with the yeah. people that you serve. So yeah. thank you I, for sharing. You're welcome. I and is everybody familiar with A Night to Shine and what A Night to Shine is? Yeah. Is everybody f familiar with that? Because I, I don't know if everybody knows. Okay. Oh, it's okay. a it's okay. sponsored by Team Tebow. It's a, a, a prom for um, ind individuals who have disabilities. And the concept is that everybody is crowned a king and a queen because they're all yeah. oh, okay. and they are always looking for usually a local church or organization will do it. And it's um, done across the world on the same day, which is that usually that Friday before Valentine's Day. And um, they're always looking for um, volunteers, but you have to go through a process and um, background check and all that good stuff. So if you're ever interested in connecting, just type in a night to shine, um, filter into where it may be in your area. <clears throat> yeah, and so Janice, that sounds like you've already, your club's already kind of figured that out and is gonna be volunteering at the event in your local area. Oh, yeah, we've gone through the background check. I plan to work personally in the respite room with the parents and caregivers. And you know, we'll pick up drinks for them. We sit and laugh and chat and just make them feel good. That's our only mission for that night. <laughs> so it's wonderful. But I Every person who participates has a buddy with them. So that um, everybody has a buddy and then there's like what um, Janice is going to be doing. They have a room for parents. Usually a lot of local organizations will donate food. They will donate time. Um, you come in, they'll do your makeup for the female, for the males, they're shine their shoes, get in a limo and come around to the area and they come out on a red carpet and they take pictures. So it's a huge, huge, big event, a big to do to make them feel so amazing and good. It's, so, it's, it's the cutest little thing ever. Love it's, it. It's wonderful. Yes. Donation of prom dresses and suits, boutonnieres for the guys and corsages for the, for the girls. So it's beautiful. Music playing. And they are in a separate room. So it's all about them. And then the respite room is in a different area for the parents to just, it's a wonderful event. Feel good event. That's awesome. Yeah. Yes. So I definitely recommend to check that out. and. Um, I know our uh, Tri-State Club um, does uh, participates in that. And um, so our Martinsburg Club, actually, I don't know, Judy, if you want to talk about the project that we just, a very similar type project that's actually being held on our Civitan Days of Service, uh, Day of Service on March 25th, similar event. Uh, Judy, I don't know if you want to share anything. You, you're muted. You're muted. Judy, you're muted. Yeah, this is a local high school, I believe, that um, was asking for help um, from the community. So our club decided that would be a good project to do. So we're going to donate some money for the prom gowns or suits for the guys and see how that goes. That's something new to us. So I don't know if any of us will actually do hands-on, but that's an option, too, if if you'd like to do that. So that's exciting. Yeah, I think Mark's already planning to be there. Unfortunately, I'm going to be in Birmingham Good. down with the juniors, but. Oh, you'll be um, with me. <laughs> yeah, I'll be yes. with Jeannie. <laughs> Thank you, Mark. Thank Birmingham. you, Mark. John, Janice, did you have something? Janice, Janice, yeah. that was very inspiring about the three different projects. And one of the things that we've talked about in leadership and kind of a lead into my next presentation is if a club uh, can put together a project report, you know, how you do it, you know, that if you have a, a you know, six or seven people, you can put to the, together this project and this is a, an outline and here's a contact 
and then post that, you know, on the Facebook page or something like that. Yes. So that we can spread those. That would be fantastic. I can do that. And who should I send that to? Send it to me. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, right. John or Kendra or myself, whoever, um, yeah. everyone, and um, we'll definitely get that out to the rest of the group. Um, and one of the things I want to just mention is a, a really good thing that comes out of just a conversation about one service project. We just talked about this on um, last Tuesday night about this one project, and then all of a sudden it sparked all this conversation about, well, who else, you know, uh, may be doing things that we don't know and we need to reach out to. And so since then, we've um, We've had contact with the Special Olympics in our area, and it was interesting, Judy or Mark, I don't know if you want to talk about it, but about who knew who, knew who right? So we, we said, oh, we want to do this, or does anybody know? And then all of a sudden it was like, oh, I know somebody there. Oh, I know somebody there, or I can, you know, get in contact with them, or I can message them on Facebook. And so it just is really interesting when you start thinking about kind of who's in your community, who do we want to connect with? And then who knows somebody there? And all of these great ideas and contacts start to, to emerge. So um, definitely encourage you guys to, to do that as you're planning your civic engagement service. Joanne, did you have something? I just, yes, I want to put a plug in for Frederick. And um, we have our, many of you know, we have a big uh, indoor mini golf tournament that we've started. This will be our 11th year that we've done it. And uh, it takes lots of volunteers. So in the past, we've had some people from different clubs come and help us um, throughout the day. And it's February 18th. And it's also a very big fundraiser for our club. Um, we're able to raise about $15,000 each time we do this. Um, so I, um, and putting the opportunity out to other clubs if you want to come and join in and see the fun for the day and also help by volunteering um we will give you a, a little stipend we'll give your club a little stipend for each person that wants to come and help so um just a little plug there it's a it's a it's a really fun day and denise was huge in getting it off the ground and running after meeting some folks at international convention from Idaho and um, she brought it back to Frederick and it's been very successful for us. Um, so if you are interested, you can contact me. Um, maybe somebody can type my email in the chat for me because I uh, am on my phone and can't do three things at once. <laughs> and I'm holding my dog. <laughs> <laughs> the important things. Um, Yep, we'll absolutely get that in there. And yeah, I definitely recommend if you guys, a lot of clubs I know are looking for fundraisers and you certainly don't have to do it. We started very small. Um, having our first year event was very small, but we grew it very quickly because the community needed or wanted it. And, um, you know, Joanne was on the board meeting on Saturday and I think you sold out, sold out 63 teams in 24 minutes. Did I hear that right? In 24 yes. minutes, sold out all 63 of our foursomes um, that participate in the event. So it's a sought after event, definitely one that if you want to learn how to do <laughs> a fundraiser, um, you know, I encourage you to come if you can and, and learn as much as you can because it's, um, yeah, it's a huge Thank success. you, Kendra. Thank you, Kendra. <laughs> awesome. All right. Anybody else have anything that they want to share before we wrap up for the night? great meeting thank you yeah thank you guys all so much for coming and then the last um thing i'm gonna say is please um there is so much awesome stuff happening and i know we got over the holidays the weather's not necessarily so great to get out and do stuff so this is a great time to plan and get and really feel and you know energized and get your club members energized so that we can jumpstart our 2023 and make this one of our best years yet. So um, hope to see you guys next month in February on February 22nd at 6 p.m. Um, and continue to bring these great ideas and looking forward to hearing from John and, um, and Ginger. All right, everybody have a wonderful month. Happy Valentine's Day and all the things between now and when I see you guys next month. Take care. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.
Denise, what I might work on is 